When doing tissue culture work, finding contaminated culture flasks can be a scientist's worst nightmare. It only takes one contaminated culture to cast doubt on the validity of past and current experiments in question. In this video, we're going to discuss the importance of minimizing cell culture contamination, the different types of cell contamination, and how to detect cell culture contamination based on the source of the contaminants. What are the different types of contaminants in cell culture? There are two types of contaminants, chemical contaminants and biological contaminants. Chemical contaminants usually come from equipment, media, water, or sera. Biological contaminants include bacteria, fungi, yeast, and viruses. Bacteria, fungi, and yeast are the more common contaminations, and you can usually detect them visually. However, although viruses are rare, they are much harder to detect and control. How do you identify bacterial and fungal contamination in cell culture? Bacteria and fungi are common contaminants in animal cells and culture. Usually their presence can be detected by observing the following changes. The medium changes color and appears cloudy. In media containing phenol red, bacteria can change the medium's color to yellow, but fungi will change the medium's color to pink. The medium changes pH. Bacteria contaminants can increase the acidity of the medium, whereas fungi might make the medium more alkaline. You see a distinct shape under the light microscope. With fungal contamination, there might be clumps or small budding objects, whereas with bacterial contamination, you're likely to see small moving objects that have a different shape than your cell lines. Another way to detect bacteria and fungi is by performing a microbial culture in a special media, then testing the bacterial cells using gram stain. If you need a protocol for gram stain, Gold Bio has a really helpful protocol that you can find linked in the description. How to detect mycoplasma in cell culture. Mycoplasma is a group of bacteria that commonly contaminate cell cultures, such as human cells and other mammalian cells. They are very small, free-living, prokaryotes that lack a cell wall, making it impossible to detect them with the naked eye or even through a microscope. In addition, they do not cause cloudiness, which often accompanies other types of cell culture contamination. Most importantly, mycoplasma infection generally does not result in observable cell death. Consequently, they can proliferate and go undetected in cell culture dishes for a very long period of time becoming a major obstacle to performing reliable and accurate in vitro experiments. Similar to other microbial contaminants, mycoplasma contamination can wildly affect cell physiology and metabolism. There are plenty of methods available to detect mycoplasma in cell culture, including isolation on selective microbial growth media, direct or indirect DNA stain, PCR, nested PCR, ELISA, and immunostaining. Each of these methods have their advantages and disadvantages. To learn more about these methods, check out our article on mycoplasma detection linked in the description. How do you detect viral contamination in cell culture? Viral contamination is hard to detect using a regular light microscope, so we recommend using electron microscopy, immunohistochemistry, or ELISA assays instead. In addition, a test using electron microscopy is useful to find the presence of viral particles. Later on, further testing using other methods such as immunohistochemistry or immunofluorescence assays are also helpful to find out more about the strain of the virus. Unfortunately, there are no treatments for viral contamination, so it is hard to recover the contaminated cell lines. Therefore, the contaminated flasks must be discarded to prevent cross-contaminations of other cell lines. How do you rescue contaminated cell cultures? Usually, the best thing to do with contaminated cell cultures is to throw them away, decontaminate equipment, and start over with a new culture from your frozen stock. However, if you absolutely have to keep it, you can try to rescue it by treating it with some antibiotics and growing the cells in a culture flask in a separate incubator. Once you're sure the contaminants are completely clear, establish a frozen stock for future work, grow the remaining culture for a month, and retest it for contaminants. Here's a chart of some antibiotics commonly used for treating contaminated cell culture, and you can find a link to the full protocol in the video description. As always, if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. 
Below, I'll have a link to the protocols mentioned, as well as some other links about cell culture. Thank you for watching and for all your gold bio support. Take care.